Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, it's time to do the updated Cold Heart Guide. Why is that? Because everyone's getting one. And I see so many Cold Hearts where people are like doing this build and they think they've got this great build. And it's like, no, you've made the same mistake as everybody else. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you my Cold Hearts. Probably the only champion that I built three of the three dupes of the same champ. On my whole account. Which is mental. It's mental when I've got, uh, you know, dupe legendaries all over the place. Uh, I think it's the only champion where I've got three level 60s of the same one. Doesn't mean I need three. If you've got three cold arts, don't build three. Two is plenty enough. But I wanted them to do different things. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you three builds. What I want you to tell me down below. Two things they've all got in common. Okay before I tell you how I'm going to build them, two things which they've all got in common. You comment below. Cold Heart number one. There's probably three things actually they've all got in common, to be fair. Cold Heart number one. Cold Heart number two. Cold Heart number three. What do they all have in common? Yeah? What are the mistakes that people make building a cold heart? Let's just go through it. So firstly, let's go through her skills. What's she got? Four hitter on her A1. It's very unique. There's, there's so few champions that hit four times on their A1. She hits at random, which can be annoying because if you've got people that are asleep or whatever, she can actually just kind of spread this random hitting A1 and it does wake up some sleepy fellows. But on something like Fire Knight, where you've got just one enemy or dragon or whoever, you know, you basically got four times to hit the same enemy. If you build her with something like Giant Slayer, she's just getting Giant Slayer procs all the time. Um, so this A1 can be really nice. It also lands heal reduction. If you book her out, which you should do, 35% chance to land it per hit, and she hits four times, it nigh on always goes on, yeah? You need accuracy to land the heal reduction. The heal reduction, honestly, is, is only valuable in this game against finite boss, some faction war bosses potentially and agref now against agref unless you're nuking the spiderlings she hits the spiderlings they counter attack everyone gets poison it's a bad day okay but if you've got somebody who blows up the spiderlings first throwing out the hill reduction on agref is actually not a terrible thing to do but anyway she's mainly useful with this for finite she's also the only champion in the game there's 600 plus champions yeah i rate them all I know how many there are. There's a load. She's the only one in the whole game who's, ha who's had her AI tuned specifically to do Fire Knight without being dumb. Okay? She won't come in there and try and land her A3 until that shield is down. All she will do is A1. It makes her insanely valuable for Fire Knight. So this A1 is actually one of the best A1s in the game for me. A2 then. AoE smack. Um, this ability scales from attack. Okay, so if you want to do damage with her A2, you've got to throw her attack up. She's also got a chance to place decrease accuracy, which is actually quite a nice debuff for an AoE, um, and a chance to place poison if heal reduction is out there. So, you know, this this whole kind of A2, albeit it's a good ability, is by far the weakest part of her kit and the thing to pay least attention to. Unless you were going to play her in the arena, it's literally the thing that you just forget about because it's not her purpose. Albeit, she can do a bit of a smack against enemy waves if you're trying to use it to get to a boss. This is her bread and butter, the A3. Tax one enemy, decreases the target's turn meter by 100% um, and a 30% extra chance to crit. What does that mean? It means you could build her with 70% crit rate. That was one of the things they've all got in common, apart from one was at 69, but... 70% crit rate. You do not need 100% crit rate to land this ability with a full nuke. Okay, which means that you get way more stats that you can push somewhere else. Okay, it's a really important point. Damage increases according to enemy max HP. Okay, so let's say, you know, if you've got a massive HP enemy, like a million HP, her damage scales as that HP grows. There's also a little bit of a multiplier with her attack but because the enemy max hp is such a big multiplier for her damage 
you don't care about attack for this ability. So the second thing they've all got in common is that I'm not scaling their attack up, I'm scaling up their HP. Because I do not want them to be the focal point of damage. Okay, so first thing, 70% crit rate. Second thing, HP chest on all of them. Yeah, they've all got it. HP chest, HP chest. No matter what build I'm going for, they've all got the HP chest. Yeah, this is one of the serious ways to keep her alive. Okay, and you're like, well, surely she's got an attack ring. No, I want her to stay alive. This one's got a defense ring. This one's got HP ring. Yeah, so they're built for survivability apart from the 70% crit rate and a buttload of crit damage, okay? But the other thing they've all got in common is they've got enough accuracy to land the Heartseeker. And every single ability I've just spoken about requires accuracy to land the abilities, yeah? So the Heartseeker, the decreased turn meter, which is a massive part of her kit. She's not just a damage machine. This is a huge part of her kit. It needs accuracy to land. So when I'm building them out, I'm thinking 70% crit rate, enough accuracy to do the stage of, of dungeon or whatever I'm on, um, high enough HP that she's not the focal point of damage. And then after those things are done, we then start to say, well, let's get her a bit fast and let's push as much crit damage as we can. So it goes ASDD, accuracy, speed, defensive stats, damage. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of way I'm thinking of it. And even for her, actually, speed probably comes below the defensive stats because I really do not want her to take any damage. So I've got three built right now. The first one here is built for... Um, level 21 to 25 content or doom tower content where your damage actually only scales up to 10 percent of the enemy's max hp you can't do more than that so there's no point in slamming crit damage on her which means i put her in a relentless set and i get her to spiral attacks as quickly as i can yeah whereas the other two were built to do stage 20 finite back in the day and i actually pushed them into savage gear because it ignores defense and helps me on the waves it does and it also just kind of nukes the boss so there's kind of two different builds one which is kind of pre level 21 stuff which is about um nuke and the other one is about being able to survive because you know you're going to take some damage from the bosses and actually the relentless set helps me spiral uh, turns as quickly as possible to get back to the heart seeker as soon as i can so it's just worth saying on my mastery then for both of my damage dealing cold hearts i've gone helm smasher now the thing with cold heart is you've got options okay so you can either go for helm smasher um or you could go for flawless execution flawless execution gives you absolute consistency of damage helm smasher gives you spikier damage if you want to blow stuff up um, for good numbers and then you've got giant slayer is when you get to like stage 21 to 25 and actually you just want damage through hits or if you're using it for doom tower damage through hits and this will give you uh, more damage for your your time um, when you get to that kind of higher level content if you actually look at my um, tank cold heart I don't even run her with masteries at all and you'll see in this video she wouldn't have done any more damage unless I'd kind of went through and got a giant slayer and then maybe she would have done a, a scratch more damage but she doesn't really need masteries when you run her on higher level stuff so right up to level 20 punch her with either helm smash or flawless execution depending on what you need but honestly from 21 to 25 or doom tower you can get away with no masteries at all so let me start then by showing you some stage 20 stuff. Obviously my guys, they're, they're hyper powered. I will do a guide actually showing it on my free to play once uh, I've got a build out on the free to play because maybe it'll be a bit more relevant to some people here. But basically what, what does she do against Dragon? Well, I've got a couple of people, well, three champions actually that have all got a good level of control. So they're only really in here to do damage. And then when we get to the boss, she can't drop Termitra on a Dragon, but she can absolutely nuke it okay so we've got seal dropping stuns we've got visix dropping a decreased speed and then control as well and ninja's going to be freezing as well in a minute i've not even set their ai's but i could set their ai's to be even more in tune so that we're not kind of taking this issue 
of damage. But you see the Heart Seekers at this point just do a ton of damage uh, and get through to the next wave pretty comfortably. And people like, you know, the Visix and the, the Seal, they're literally just in there to control the enemy. Um, in fact, Ninja as well. The, the AoE freeze is insane. Uh, I really like Ninja as a, a kind of just a, a general dungeon champion. Honestly, I can't believe how few stuns I'm getting off with my seal. It's literally one, uh, where it should be at least two or three usually. So it's been pretty unlucky. We can see here we're going to get um, the AoE stun off. And, uh, pro sorry, provoke. Which just means that our cold hearts aren't going to take any damage. And you notice that even when they're trying to hit us, they're not hitting cold hearts anyway. Because their HP is higher. Their HP is higher than my Visix. Therefore, my Visix, who is a tank, is tanking the damage. That's why the HP chests are so important. Most people's accounts that I look at is the Cold Hearts who take the first hits. And they just flop down on the ground because they don't have very high defense. So we get into the boss. And even without, you know, decent decreased defense and weakened type abilities, we're still going to see some big nukes coming in from the Cold Hearts Heart Seekers. Because... Um, they're just built to do absolute damage. So the only person who could drop defense for me is Ninja. He's not landing it right now, which is a bit annoying. We still get a 460k Heart Seeker away, even without the drop defense. And you end up slamming this dragon for a ton of damage. Decreased defense finally lands. It's landed too late. Doesn't even really matter at this point because this dragon is well and truly dead. So that's the type of work that she can do against dragon. She's not the best dragon champion in the game. But she does do a decent amount of work. And you can see here she's done a ton of damage. Ninja's actually slamming for a bit more than the Cold Hearts because of all the wave damage that he does. Um, into the kind of two best areas for her in terms of dungeons, Spiders and Finites. Um, you still see her in Finite 25 teams. You still see her in Drag uh, in sorry, in Spider 25 teams as well. But the build is different, like I've just shown you. You scale back the damage. And you try and get your hits away much quicker so that you kind of rotate back to your Heart Seeker as quickly as you can. Okay, so let's see the weak one now. And I say weak one, look at her crit damage here 127 crit damage. Yeah, so she's not built to do damage, she's built for survivability. She's in Relentless to recycle her uh, Heart Seeker as quickly as she can. And um, what we do here is with my team setup, we're just going to make sure that Cold Heart uses a Heart Seeker as the opener. And as her first choice, because she won't do it naturally. She doesn't have the brain power for that on Spider. Uh, we're going to make sure that Stagnite starts with his A1. I want to try and land decreased speed on the Spider as early as I can, rather than the decreased attack. Uh, I'm going to make Mordecai burn straight away. And I'm going to make Achak use his Freeze straight away. So the damage to the actual Spiders really come from the burn. Um, Coldheart's in there for two reasons. She's in there to drop turn meter 100%. Obviously on level 25 it halves it, so it's 50%. Um, but she's also in there to just do those one, you know, one um those massive nukes, sorry, those massive nukes. So let's throw it in, let's see it in action. And obviously the HP burn can be any of the AoE HP burn champs. Achak is just a control champion, but he does it really well. Um Mordecai, yet yeah, HP burn, and then you've got a couple of people in there really just to do um support like decrease attack and decrease defense you don't need the decrease defense honestly but the decrease attack is nice when the spiderlings do start coming at us and honestly all of the damage is just going to be done from these burns or the heart seekers when the heart seeker rotates around so cold heart she's going to do a a2 and a, she's done her a2 already she's going to do her a1 i'm hoping for extra turns didn't get any there but you see bogoff is kind of tanking and healing and we're just relying on the HP burn to do all of the work. I'm a bit unfortunate. I've not landed any decreased speed. I guess it's just because it's affinity. It's not the best for this. But I also want to make sure that I've got a couple of affinity tanks that, that mean that Coldheart never starts taking damage. And we've had one rotation. It's going to end up being a couple of rotations. All of those abilities start coming back on. Another Heart Seeker out there, 700k. That's the max hit. You're not going to get any more damage out of, the, out of her than that. So there's no need to go throwing in all of the uh, extra crit damage for level 25 or 21 to 25. And you can see here, it's going to end up being like a couple of minute run, which is cool. It's fine. 
and she's never really been any, under any threat. And that's the main thing you need to do is just keep her um, out of harm's way. And just use her as your kind of turn meter plus your rotation of uh, damage. So you see here, the burns have done to finish the spider off. He's not going to have a chance. And if we were lucky, we would have had an extra heart seeker just through um, the relentless gear. But, you know, under a couple of minute run on spider 25 with no threat against you, that's kind of what you're after. And you see cold hearts damage is not what it's about here. Mordecai's doing the damage or Akoff or whoever you use. But um, cold hearts there, just turn meter and uh, a spiky little bit of damage here and there. So that's kind of what she does on 25 stuff anywhere or on Doom Tower anywhere. Um, the last place I'm going to show her today is Fire Knight because she's so good here. Um, I'll show you stage 20 and then I'll show you 25 as well. Okay, then so stage 20, I've got my two high damage dealers in there. We've got Seer and Lydia to clear the waves, Renegade to do my reset. And this is kind of like an old speed team that I used to use, but you'll see the impact. So Seer being what she is does a load of work we have to wait for the renegade now if i was rebuilding this nowadays so i can control ai i would probably make a renegade quicker but still you, you still have to have two turns from seer so i guess it doesn't really matter and we get onto the boss super quick 20 odd seconds and now's where the cold hearts ai kick in a1 yeah rather than doing the heart seeker a1's come out which means that the heart seeker comes out at this point we should get the drop defense and weaken. There it is. And then it's about now just kind of rotating back around to that heart seeker one more time. Uh, for these for these two and doing the nukes. There it is. Sometimes that's a kill at that point, but it's like 30 to 40 or five seconds. Each time stage 20 says bye. And because of the AI from the cold hearts, it makes it super strong. So for stage 25, honestly, this level can be a nightmare. So if you don't have Seer or someone in your disposal to kind of clear the waves out, what you need is a good amount of damage, but then you also need to have the Terminator control when you get to the boss. So Coldheart can kind of come in. This is my tank Coldheart. She's really here to do Terminator control and that 10% hit when we get to the boss. So it's a healthy amount of damage when we're on the boss. Um, and against the wave, she's going to do a kind of little tickle uh, as she goes. Really, we're relying on Seal and Visix to control the enemies whilst we kind of slowly but surely do damage to them. Without, without Seer or a Poison Exploder, the waves just take a long time. So you have to have a ton of control within your, um, within your team to make sure that you get there. I'm going to kind of speed us on. We can listen to a track from Soundstripe, who are a sponsor of my channel. Um, they, also, they also kind of sponsor my streams in terms of giving me royalty-free music to play in the back end of some of my videos. We'll watch it when we get through to the boss, and then we can just kind of see the work that Coldheart does when the shield is up to always A1 and break the shield before a law then takes over, uh, controlling the turn meter for the boss. So let's watch it through um, and enjoy. Thank you. 
There you go all you need is six minutes of your life if you don't have a seer and then it's easy full auto comp um but you'll notice my cold heart is just you know a casual build and honestly i mean my lydia is built well but no one else is built crazy in this team at all it's just about speed accuracy and survivability on all of them and then you just um you get control everybody here is kind of doing turn me to control on the boss and you know cold heart is just really in there to give you that initial push to break through that shield easily with her smart ai so you go guys look she can be used in doom tower she's the only real end game rare there's a few out there which are good she's the only real one so make sure you put her in an hp chest i've been hell hades i will catch you later